in the Photoshop CS3 beta, there's some enhancements being made to the HDR merge. So what we've got here is three images that I shot in the Grand Canyon. And these different images here have been bracketed, meaning that this one here I exposed for the midtones. This one here was exposed for the shadows. So I could get all the detail here in the clouds and in the canyon here, and especially in this area. And then this other one here was exposed for the shadows. I'm sorry, the other one I said shadows actually meant for the highlights. So that all the highlights would come through. And this one here was exposed for the shadows. So notice in this area here, the rock is showing, whereas on the other image here is very dark. But of course, all this is washed out. But the greenery is showing here too. And if you look on this image here, the greenery is completely gone. So what we need to do is we're actually going to merge these. And these are all 16-bit images. So it may take a little bit of time here. Notice these are 72 megabyte files. What we're going to do is we're going to merge these three images together into one HDR image. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under the... It's now been moved to the um, Automate menu. And let me see. There we go, merge to HDR. We're clicking on that, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use files. We could add the open files. And we have a fourth file there that we don't want to use. It's just the gray background that I'm using to stop you having to uh, stare at my screen. So we've got these three here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click OK. And this will actually align the sources. This is a new feature inside HDR. What it's going to do is it's going to align the three images together and create one high definition image out of it with a high dynamic range. And it's going to be a 32 bit image. It's going to be 32 bits in each channel. So notice here you can see in the layers palette here, there's some things going on here. What it's doing right now is it's analyzing the three different files. And here we are, we're inside that merge to HDR. And then this is the result of the three. So what it is actually is a floating point system. So we can click and we can drag. We can look at the highlights. Notice those are completely blown out. But it opens up every single shadow in the image. Now we can go back this way. And we'll start to plug everything up. But notice that it brings in all the highlights. So nothing is blown out. So what we could do is we could just choose a nice little conversion here. And notice we're going to a 32-bit image. And I would just click OK, and it would save it as a 32-bit image. And we could save that to our hard drive. Now, we can't really print or share a 32-bit image. So what we would need to do is convert it to a 16. I'm actually going to save one step here, because typically I would just hit OK and save it. Actually, I'll just do it the slow way. Here we go. It's just going to take a little while for it to think. I was going to do a quick... Um, because understand that there's three 72 megabyte files in here. Right now we're running Windows native on it and on the Intel on, we're running CS3 so you can see that the speed is incredible. And here we go. Just about done. Take a little bit longer and notice that Photoshop is a little bit. And here we go. One 32 bit file. And let's increase the size of that a little bit. Well, actually, why don't we just close out these other ones just to save a little screen real estate. And here we go. We're, right now, we've got a 32-bit file, which is pretty amazing, really, when you think about the speed that was actually accomplished very quickly. This can be adjusted just by simply clicking and dragging in the bottom here inside the window. You'll see we've still got that. Now, if we want to adjust this to be used, what we're going to do is we're just going to go image, adjust, uh, so we're going to go mode, and then we're going to choose, say, a 16 or an 8-bit. So let's choose 16-bit. And then you're going to notice that we have the HDR conversion. And this is where we actually convert it back into a usable file size. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose the local adaption, and I'm going to hit the coning, the toning curve. And now you can see here's our curve and look at our image here with the 32-bit uh, color space. Notice that this is extremely horrible looking right now. And that's because the range is far too wide for 16-bit. So what we're going to do is in the curves here, we're just going to click and drag the bottom and take the shadows 
Notice that we've closed up the shadows a little bit. You may want to experiment with this just a little bit. Get our shadows right there. So basically we've clipped everything darker than that because we don't really need it. So what we're going to do now is we're also going to do the same thing with the highlights. We're going to bring these in just a little bit, but not too much because we don't want to clip these highlights. Notice if I bring it in a lot out here, it blows it out. So let's actually just bring that back and we'll preserve as many highlights as we can. Notice right now, we're able to see the clouds with the canyon and all this foreground. We're seeing a lot more detail, a lot more dynamic range than we ever would have been able to capture with a single photograph. But we still want to get a little bit more contrast. Notice there's no real blacks in there and it's kind of making it look kind of washed out. So we're just going to bring it in a little bit more to bring in some blacks. And then we're just going to click and drag down a little bit just to add a little bit of contrast to the image. Bring it back just a little bit if we're worried. And that's looking a little bit more true. And I'm just going to click OK. I'm quite happy with that conversion. I could brighten it up a little bit if I wanted. But this is just for the sake of demonstration. Notice now it's converting the HDR into a 16-bit image. And then we go in now inside a 16-bit channel. Notice that we don't have the slider anymore because we no longer have the floating point system. But we can see here that the foreground, we can see detail in here. The canyon here is properly exposed and then we've still got all the detail in the sky. So all the shadows are showing and the highlights are showing. So you can see this is a great tool, the Merge to HDR to create high dynamic range images.